Hi, welcome to Talk About here on Shaw TV North Island. My name is John Twig and I've got a great guest, Guy Dauncey. Guy, thank you for coming in. Thanks for inviting me, John. I wonder how many people watching know who you are. Uh, you're one of the, probably the best futurist on Vancouver Island. I would like to boast and say one of the best in Canada. How I would that? think so. Actually, the world. <laughs> well, I'm a member of the World Future Society. I'm a yeah. newly invented futurist with this new book. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, listeners can tell by the accent that uh, you've come from somewhere. 40 years living in England, yes. Uh -huh. But now I have a glass of water. Yeah. Well, my, my wife still drinks water. <laughs> so I'm getting corrupted by Canadian, right? Yeah. How did you get to BC? My plane. <laughs> <laughs> what brought you to British Columbia? I was invited to Canada on a lecture tour oh, really? in 1985 based on my work on issues around unemployment and community-based economic development. Right. And to cut a long story short, I fell in love with Canada. Uh -huh. Was it Canada or BC? It was Canada as a whole. Uh -huh. But if you're going to choose a place in Canada, Vancouver Island Absolutely. has to be top of the list. So you get lucky, right? You know, yeah. And I met my wife out here. Yeah. Okay. She's she here? No, she's came out in 1970s from England as well. Oh. So, we, so we share all the English yeah. comedy and humor together. Yeah. Now, you were in Victoria for many years. I kind of knew you 20, a bit. 25 years lived in Victoria. Yeah. We just moved up to the Yellow Point Cedar yeah. area. Were you on the, in the Gulf Islands for a while? No. Oh, okay. No. Why uh, Yellow Point? Follow my wife. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> well, she's a she's a grower and a farmer. Yes. And she wanted more area and more food involvement, and so she wanted a new adventure. So Yellow Point's a beautiful area. That area, it's like the Gulf Islands without the ferries. Absolutely. So it's really. Yeah, I have really a friend actually who really lives, beautiful. He, he's, he bicycles by your place every morning at five a.m. Oh, there you go. Yeah, and I, I it get is it's fantastic. very. And for me as a writer, it's very quiet. I get a lot of work done. Yeah. Now, actually, that's uh, this book, uh, Journey to the Future, A Better World is Possible. Uh, I've actually read it, uh, and I don't always read all the books. <laughs> Shame people. on you. <laughs> <laughs> well, sometimes, you know, know, we get busy. Well, this is but a yours book. is a grabber. Thank and, you. Uh, yeah. Now, I heard you before we were on air, uh, three and a half years to write it? This, this is, yeah, this is, th my previous books took no more than four drafts each. His previous 10 books. Previous, yeah. This was 23 drafts. Wow. 940 end notes. It's set in the year 2032, when Vancouver yes. has become one of the world's greenest cities. Actually, I'm going to jump. Why did you choose 2032? Because I started writing in 2012. Uh, <laughs> 20 years yeah, ahead. Because actually, I saw an excerpt. I think it's on your website that needs updating, by the way, oh. where uh, y uh, there was a date that had been passed that yeah, you revised Oh, I've the written years. lots of stories in the past and yeah. other stuff. I, I enjoyed... There's an excerpt of the chapter that I found. No, that was from a previous book, not from okay. this. There's no, oh. no, yeah, I, I'll okay. correct you on that okay. one, but there was a previous thing I did on that, yeah. yeah. But um, what I find is that my biggest task in all this is to make people fall in love with the future uh -huh. and be excited about creating and building a better world. Well, we don't have a choice. Most people by default have decided that the future is going to be worse than the present, yeah. that we're going down the, to you know, hell in a handbasket, that it's blame the government, blame the corporations, blame something yeah. or other, that the future looks terrible. Yeah. And I, will give to, I gave a talk to the high school in Nanaimo recently, Woodlands High School. I had 400 kids on the floor of the gym, and it was just called Change the World. And yeah. At the beginning of the talk, I said, when you think about the future of the world, do you feel worry or hope? And? Five students put their hands up for hopeful yeah. out of 400. Yeah. Then I gave a whole slideshow about the, the solar revolution and the change that's happening in the world and all the things that are going on and asked them the same question at the end and yeah. 200 hands went up. Yeah. Yeah. They hadn't, they, they've been pickled in the, the media sense of, you know, the, media, the, ma the mainstream media just gives us bad news all the time. He sells papers. It, whatever. And so, Unless you really dig into how the world is changing for the better and how we can make it change for the better, you don't know. Well, that's why I was so keen to have you on the show, and thank you again for coming up. The book titled Journey to the Future, A Better World, in case you missed it, the author is Guy Dauncey. Uh, very interesting book for numerous reasons. One, it's written as a narrative. It's a novel. It's, if, yeah. you, if you're in the future, like, yes, it's, you're right. It's, so it's accessible. <laughs> 
And the other one that's I've never seen, and you know, I, I read more books than most people. Uh, it has a website where all of the footnotes are accessible. Yeah. So instead of just like a one line, you know, where did you get this from? Yeah. You can go and read the context. It's brilliant. Well, I'm in. The, I'm dealing with so much innovation. There's about yes. 500 innovations in the book. Yeah, and 95 percent of them or something already happening in the world. 5% I might yeah. have invented. Yeah. So people need to follow it. Did he invent this or is it real? Well, you've, and they can you've go and collected follow up. a lot of original thinking from a, like so many fields, yeah. science and time warps and uh, it's, well, well, there's, there's, there's it's a bit mind boggling. <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> there's, there's history, there's, there's social change, there's environmental change, there's technological change, political. there's economic change, political change. Yeah. And civilizational change, I like to yeah. think, really. Yeah. Um, I'm sorry, folks, but this idea popped into my head. One of the things that really struck me was you've got banking in there. Yeah. And Big the, time. the, yeah, because like one, I, I have a fixation on fixing the future myself, yeah. and I want to recreate the Bank of BC and issue currency. Yeah. Well, you're dealing with the same thing the Absolutely. monopoly Absolutely. of the issuing of credit. Yeah. So what easy to break, and yet political will there is. There was there. a lot of, Reading. I did a lot of reading and analysis for this. Yeah. I mean, I, I've worked for the last 25 years in the field of environmental and climate change, so I knew yeah. that field pretty well. But when it comes yeah. to really analyzing what caused the last financial crash, yeah. what caused the next one that's written into the book, yeah. and what are the solutions to that, yeah. and discovering that public banking is quite common around the world, yeah. and discovering that when money is created, there's not a big machine that prints out the dollar bills. That's no more than a fraction of it. Yeah. Most money is created purely by the act of trust yeah. and it electronically created you know, yeah. on the bank machine. So when the banks do that and they charge interest, the interest goes to the bank's owners. Yes. When a credit union does it, the interest goes to the members of the credit union. Yeah. When a government does it, the interest goes back to the government. Yeah. And so now public banking, in fact, the, the, the model in North America, the, the Bank of North Dakota, founded in 1919, the Wall Street Journal said it's the most successful bank in North America. Yeah. <laughs> uh, now, the U.S. gets their money by the government going to the Federal Reserve, owned by the private banks, yeah. and asking privilege, can we, and they charge interest on the creation yeah. of money. It's ludicrous. Canada has a Bank of Canada, yeah. which can issue currency, but under Trudeau, as you were reminding me in a previous call, in 1974, Pierre said that he would stop doing no, that. No, Pierre Trudeau was pressured by the Bank of International Settlements, oh, okay. which is like the club of the private bankers, yes. to stop creating money. So the Trans-Canada Railway, Trans-Canada Highway, the St. Lawrence Seaway, in the 1950s and 60s, the, the hospitals, universities, they were financed by public debt created out of thin air by the Bank of Canada with yeah. no yeah. interest payments. Yeah. And so Canada's debt was yeah. really, really low until it started growing. Yeah. And now there's a court case on to saying we can go back to that the, 90, the, the Ga Gamary case. Galati. Galati. We case. can go back to that situation. Yeah. And have you know the Bank of Canada produce, yeah. w uh, not not for shoveling out the door, but yeah. where there's an investment that yeah. builds the country that it's going to bring a return. Yeah. Yeah. It's a valid use of money. Well, the, uh, there's presently a huge amount of labor done for with, without pay. Uh, volunteer labor, but also unpaid homework, and yeah. housekeeping and all that. Uh, you know, we could, with the stroke of a pen, impute a value to that. The, it, when you, whenever you create money, you have to watch for inflation. Yes. So the private sector's been creating money through all the debt, and there's been a, a steady, steady inflation. I mean, when I first got a job, I earned 16 pounds, $30 a week. So we've seen the inflation yeah. since then. And so if you were to just suddenly monetize housework and pour the money out, you'd get much higher inflation. So that's the reason yeah. that the Bank of International Settlements gave as, as, as its excuse. Yeah. So in, the in, this, in set in the future, I've got a, a big upheaval happening in the latter part of this decade that causes people to really rethink what's happening in the economy, to address yeah. plutocracy, to close yeah. down the tax havens. Yeah. To that's stop actually, to uh, we could half yeah. an hour on the tax I mean, there's division. so much around this that, because we, we have an environmental crisis with climate change and the well, need to move to renewable that. energy. And we have a financial crisis brewing as well. And Absolutely. we have a, a wider ecological crisis with the state of plastics in the oceans and all that yeah. stuff going on. Yeah, Microbeads. And, and the book tackles all of them by showing how people organize together in small groups in their neighborhoods and then in their communities yeah. and then in the city as a whole 
But instead of just protesting and say, stop capitalism or stop the government or vague things, they come up with a very tangible yeah. program of solutions, like 25 yeah. specific solutions, which are practical. Yeah. You've got a thing about, yeah, cooperative self-organization is yeah. the foundation of a better world. Yes. Can you elaborate on that? Cooperative working self to People working together to get stuff done. It's yeah. how every hockey team works. Yeah. Within the hockey team, you, if you're really cooperative, you'll score really well, but you're competitive against the other teams. Yeah. It works in business. You're cooperating within the team. So, yeah. But we need to be highly cooperative in our cities, in our communities, in our country to work provinces. together. Provinces. And the provinces as a whole. I think provinces we can do more because and it's manageable. And neighborhoods. I yeah. mean, Definitely. When, when in, when, if you have a neighborhood with no organization, yeah. and then someone says, let's start a community association. Let's start a community garden. Then people say, it brings out a higher aspect of people's willingness to help. Yeah. Whether it's the Rotary Club, the Lions, they're all cooperative self-organization. Rotary here is huge. And because of those clubs, people have achieved amazing things. Yeah. Otherwise, we're sitting as individuals, watching television, doing our gardening, whatever it is. Yeah. We're not drawing on our real strength. So the book is really big on yeah. cooperative yeah. self-organization. Um, now, you would create a character, Patrick, yeah. Wu, yes. uh, in Vancouver, and actually that's one of the joys too about this book, is, you know, like usually we read stuff about like, you know, this is in New York or LA or something. This one is about where I live. There you go. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> and it's helped by the fact that Vancouver, A, it's a beautiful city. Yeah, it's got a world reputation now. But Best B, place to live in the world. The, the, today's news. Yes. But the city government decided we want to make this the greenest city in the world. Yes. And they've also decided that we want to get to 100% renewable energy. Yeah. So I've got the political wind in my back when yeah. I show how it actually happens. Yeah. In fact, I have them failing to meet that goal by 2020, which is the current goal, because yeah. the current definition of greenest city doesn't include poverty, homelessness, and stuff oh, like that. It's good. So I had them failing to that, and then the book addresses in a big time what's happening in the downtown east side with drugs and with poverty and homelessness yeah. and the landlords. Yeah. So that by 2030, they do get to be the world's greenest city. Yeah. So your protagonist, Patrick Wu, somehow does a time travel. Do you know, there's no easy technique to I'm get there. I had bad, a dozen. But, uh, he for finds people him. That are watching, he this finds is how you get the story out because he goes to the future and says, "Well, he, he finds something called syntropy." Yeah, Patrick spent his, his his teenage years in East Africa and Somalia and Ethiopia with parents wanting refugee camps, so he didn't really know what was going on in the world. And yeah, when he comes to 2032. He's asking, he's there for four days. He's got four days to walk around and talk yeah. and ask people, how do, what's, what's going on? Yeah. He goes to a farm. And, he, and they do talk about a thing called syntropy and he keeps on yeah. puzzling, what is what this is thing this called syntropy? It's spelled yes. S-Y-N-T-R-O-P-Y. Yeah. Most people say, oh, that's too complicated. It's like if I asked you, what's relativity? Well, that's one of the first questions I asked you. Yeah, but if I asked you what's relativity, even a hundred years after Einstein did it, yeah. it's tough to answer. Yeah. So in the final chapter, there's a big dinner party when the yeah. guests get together with a physicist and biologist, and they really, what is this thing called syntropy? Yeah, and, and it's the same principle of cooperative self-organization yeah. applied through consciousness yeah. ever since the Big Bang. But you seem to imply consciousness to a lot of inanimate uh, well, forces. Well, one of the, the themes in the book is this question, like the scientists have been asking the question, which they're now asking, what is consciousness? Yes. And if you really follow that through, I mean, Fr Francis Crick, who is the top biologist who won Nobel Prizes for inventing yeah. DNA, yeah. is convinced that it's nothing to do with mechanisms. It's just purely mechanisms in the brain yeah. on a material level. His partner, Christoph Koch, who's a German-American biologist Easy for you and neuroscientist. <laughs> oh, yes. Um, K-O-C-H. Has had a Jesuit upbringing, and he is convinced that consciousness, even though he can't pin it down scientifically, is much more than just things. Now, yeah. anyone with pets, if you've got a cat or a dog, yeah. you know they're conscious. Yeah. Well, you have a thing in here about the telepathy of twins, and I think of the Sedines on the Canucks. It's amazing where they know where each well, other are on the ice. When you read the scientific analysis of telepathic twins, yeah. and most of the evidence is still anecdotal, but it's really solid, two thirds of Identical twins are not telepathic, but one third are telepathic. Yeah. And not only do they, if, if, if you and I are born together, right? And they we are. feel and we, pain when the other. Yes, is if I'm down in Victoria and I have a really blow to my arm, you feel it. They feel yeah. pain and also bizarre stuff. Yeah. They might live yeah. continents apart, but yeah. they marry on the same days, they have the yeah. same color socks. Yeah. So what does that say about creationism? It, it 
doesn't say anything to me about creationism. It says that evolution, okay, the whole right evolutionary so. journey is embedded in the nature of consciousness. Right. This consciousness has been around ever since the beginning. Yeah. Is there consciousness in water molecules? Yes, is what I've come to believe. There's consciousness, yes, yeah. in water molecules. We had an event here the other night, three writers, uh, Stillwater people put it on, and yeah. uh, Andrew Nikifork and uh, I'm sorry, the other two, yeah. Rennish and uh, the writer in residence. But uh, that question uh, came to my mind, and I, I said, did one of you guys write about the consciousness of water? Yeah. And w one fellow, Rennish, a was able to respond. Yeah. So when I talk about consciousness, I'm not, it's nothing to do with the thoughts I have, the feelings, the smells, the senses. That's all the content of consciousness. Yeah. So a bee, or I mean, a, so take a dog, it's easier. A dog's right. consciousness is smells, you know, all yeah. about smell. Yeah. And so pure consciousness is the ability to just aliveness, just beingness. Yeah. Then the brain fills it up with thoughts, language, sense, yeah. smell, everything Actions. else. But when you take consciousness itself out, and I, I read New Scientist every week, and 10 years ago they weren't even discussing it. Now yeah. they're regularly puzzling because yeah. they are really puzzled to understand yeah. what consciousness yeah. is. Did you see the Star Wars movies? Not yet. Really? Well, not, not the not new the ones, new one, the past but the old ones. ones. Oh, yes, yes. Well, when they find the, the kid and he's got this huge high count of something called midi chlorians. Yeah. And to me, there's a cousin between your consciousness, what you're talking about, the midi chlorians in there, and the Holy Spirit in the Bible. The connection I make of it is that we all are part of this massive field of consciousness. Yeah. Whether you call it a fifth dimension or a field. Yeah. And we, we all have, because everything that exists is conscious. And to the extent that we then can draw back from our individuality and get ourself out of it and relate to the wholeness of it all, you can call that God if you want. And yeah. you can call its expression through us the Holy yeah. Spirit if you want. But yeah. it's, it's also expressing itself through worms, through trees, yeah. through forests and oceans. If and when we discover God, it might not be anything like we figured. You could even argue that, that in the same way that some scientists say that, you know, we as humans are the electron's way of finding out who it is. Yeah. That the Hindus say that we are God's way of finding out yeah. what God is, because that, that ultimate existence exists everywhere. Yeah. In me, in the, in the lamps, in, in the yeah. forests, in the yeah. mountains. Yeah. So is the gist of your book that if and when mankind can become more in tune with this environment we don't understand yet, then they'll be able to better able to self-organize? No, no. The gist of the book is that self-organizing is happening right now. Yeah. It needs to be much more focused. P what happens in the book is people get more focused because of a big, big crisis that's coming. It's kind out. of out of necessity. The, the, the people, we all love our comfort. Some more than others. Everyone in some. The reason we scratch is even to make more comfortable. So, yeah. And so we have to be dragged out of our comfort by necessity, which is discomfort, either our own discomfort or seeing someone else's discomfort. I mean, the way the outreach towards the Syrian refugees, yeah. that's purely altruistic because we want to relieve their discomfort. Yeah. And the same with concern about homeless people. And it's more organized self-organizing to actually put an agenda on the table that addresses the climate crisis, the future financial crisis, the, the, what I call the crisis of loneliness as well in the neighborhoods yes. when you get old people alone, the single mothers, seniors. never designed by evolution to live alone. Yes. M we're designed to be in villages. Yeah. Most people actually love gossip and chatter and talking and mixing with other people and doing things together. There's not many of us. Yeah. Now, I like solitude, but limited amount of it, thank you very yeah. much. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm not a monk. I mean, there's not many real <laughs> solo. I love people and chat. Get me on a bus, I'm just well, chattering away to strangers. When I first encountered you, it was, it was online and you were doing a, back then I think it might have even been by fax. It was Victoria in the 80s. Uh, but you were doing a networking thing yeah. where, where you were building this big long list of people. Yeah. And you were helping people find places to rent and stuff. Well, I, I produced a newsletter for over 20 years called Eco yeah. News, which yeah. linked everyone together. And I yeah. still produce a, a green diary yeah. for all of the, there's 150 yeah. environmental organizations in Victoria alone. Yeah. So it's helping to draw them all together. Yeah. What the book goes is a whole stage further. So it's not just the environmental change people, but the social change people, the ones yeah. who want a stronger economy, people yeah. who are starting small businesses, people who want to change the banks, yeah. people who are changing education and healthcare. Yeah. All seeing a way to get a better promise of the future yeah. through acting together. That's yeah, wonderful. Um, I got chan I, 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 I resisted putting this in before so I could stay on the book a bit. But you know, W. A. C. Bennett, the premier from 1952 to 1972, was a 
great thinker. He was a social credit. He yeah. was into creating money. In 1958, he issued a silver dollar. It, it was a centennial dollar, and it yeah. had a, a totem on it. I remember because I was yeah. nine years old at the time. But, you know, we talk about creating money. Yeah. W.A.C. Bennett just did it. Whether well, the Bank of Canada liked it okay, or not. Okay, but the Social Credit Party that was founded in Alberta yes. in the 30s yes. didn't come to much there, but it influenced the government of Japan. Yes. And the reason why we had the Asian Tigers after World War II, yes. which was Taiwan, Korea, Japan, they used public banking and finance to create yes. their own credit and roll, roll ahead, and yes. China's doing the same. Yes. Germany's been doing it, France has been doing it, yeah. It's been standard, I mean, yeah. all the time, yeah. and yet yeah. the private bankers have tried to, s to stop it and make it taboo. Yeah. And now if well, you think it's n unusual. I'm really glad to bring this out a bit, because, you know, when activists present ideas about, you know, well, let's create jobs, the first thing the skeptics and the conservatives, small c, say is, where are you going to get the money? Well, we can create the money. You. When we create money, we have to be really, res really responsible because yes. all money creation is based on trust. Yes, you've got to trust that it's going to come back to you. Yeah. Otherwise, you get inflation. Yeah. But the, when the Medici's were doing their thing, you know, that's how banking started. Was you know, the, the word credit means I believe. <laughs> Just trust. That's what it comes from. I believe <laughs> you'll like repay me. Learn something today. And so, you know, the banks have their criteria, but basically yeah. they use their collateral. Do you own a house? Do you have a, what's yeah. your credit rating? Yeah. Do I believe you'll yeah. repay me? Otherwise, yeah. you're losing money, yeah. you get inflation, you've so got problems. For money to have c credibility as currency, yes. it has to be exchangeable and acceptable. One of the instant ways to make the money credible is if the government, the pr in this case the province, would say, you can use this to pay your taxes with. So all of the grocery stores that have to pay sales taxes can now pay it. I, no, I'm, I'm not going to go there with you on that okay. one at all. That, to me, gets loopy because okay. now you're just making money up out of thin air. Well, no. Money has to be tied to a constructive purpose yeah. that's going to earn its way. This is very good market economics. <laughs> it's got to well, earn its way to okay. put it back let's, into let's the, ec into the economy. Let's say there's a kid uh, raking leaves in the park. Yes. What are we going to pay him with? What if we pay him with BC dollars? You're just... Y there are community currencies in the book. Okay. And. The community currencies are mostly at the smaller level. The f I don't think we need a BC dollar separate from the federal Canadian dollar. Okay. Right. There's other Basically, if the kids, the money. someone's got to pay that kid, yeah. and someone's got to put the effort in, because otherwise, you know, you you'd undermine the basis of business credibility if there's not a sound basis for the money they're paid with. But in community currencies, with some of what, you know, the first on well, Vancouver Island. Well, Spring Island had it. Salt Spring, well, the first one was founded in Courtney, actually, called okay. the Let System, because yeah. especially in a period of high unemployment. Yeah. You've got a lot of people sitting around wishing they had work, but they've all still got skills. And they start using them, but they don't have money. Yeah. They start trading their skills with each other. A currency can facilitate that. Okay. And in fact, in, in Switzerland, this is something else, all this stuff is put into practice in the future in the book. In the 1930s, when the credit system seized up because of the Great Depression, the business people discovered they actually had credit in their invoices to each other. They set up a system called WIR, W I R, which is just German for we which is an alternative currency banking system, and they're, they're still using it in Switzerland now. So yeah. whenever, the, whenever, the, whenever the, the main economy dips, the Weir currency increases. So they actually have a separate Swiss informal currency through the Weir system. So, you know, it's well, similar to what you're saying. Believe it or not, we've gone through 28 Oh, minutes, come on. 27. Come on. <laughs> Can we stretch some more time here? Well, we're going to do a second show. Yeah. Um, but uh, the uh, website is... Uh, Journey to the Future. Dot .ca. .ca. Yeah. And then you nice, have nice a colored cover. It's nice, easy to see. It's, yeah. it's, I'm it's, very happy it, with the, the cover design. The format, the size of the type, it's, yeah. it's super excellent. And your website, too. My personal website is earthfuture.com. Uh -huh. <laughs> but is there not also a Guy Dancy website? No, no. I've, I've resisted that. Okay. Um, I have a blog called thepracticalutopian.ca. Yeah. And um, Earth Future, I thought Earth Future is a strong enough phrase to capture yeah. all the work I'm doing. Yeah. So how's the book doing? I'm getting a great response. I mean, people are yeah. taking a month. Only came, it's only came out in January. Yeah. So people are taking a month to read it. Yeah. My best response was a friend in England who's 86 years old, who reads yeah. with a magnifying glass. She's been an activist for social change all her life. She's a Quaker. You know, yeah. So she said it's the most inspiring book she's ever read. And it pulled her out of a feeling of sort of, oh, the world's all falling apart. What can I do? You know, 
And so it restored her sense okay. of positive optimism in so the future. That's one of the things you can do if you want to save the world is buy Guy Dancy's book. <laughs> Guy, thank you very much. My pleasure. And yeah. uh, folks, uh, if you want to see more, this is on a will, will be posted on Shaw TV's uh, w YouTube channel, and uh, just go Shaw TV North Island in Google, and uh, you should find it. So, uh, thank you, Laura and Valerie and Chaz and uh, Gord for doing this show, and uh, keep watching Shaw TV North Island. Thank you. <laughs>